Hello, everybody. Well, it's the same day as the day that we left uh, Superstition, and now we're out here at um, LTBA. LTBA and uh, Senator's Wash. Just outside Yuma. <clears throat> so tonight, we're going to do a talk about our solar setup and our lithium batteries because we finally upgraded them. Why are we doing this in the dark? Because this is when we have time to do it. <laughs> We've been busy. So. No, we haven't been busy. We've, we've been, been procrastinating. No, we've been busy. We've been with the family all week, and then we had to clean the house today when we got home. So, anyways, we're going to take you out and show you our new bank of batteries, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, what we got, why we got them, and how they're working for us. And why we still have that. It turns out, though. That is not the biggest energy hog we have. No, well, no. We did find out that that thing burns 15 to 20 amps. Oh, yeah, that's true. It is. We thought it was our biggest energy hog, and then we found out the Wally Direct TV, the little box, seven and a half amps. 7.9, actually. Oh, 7.9 amps. Holy mackerel. And this thing is. 15 to 20 amps. So now we know why we're losing about 20 amp hours a night, yeah. overnight. So anyways, let's go show you the battery bank first and then to talk a little bit about them. This is how I got them hooked up. Negative, negative. It ain't rocket science. This redneck can do it. I don't know what else to tell you. It's just like any other uh, solar system or battery hookup. It's this way. So that's that. These are uh, blue life or life blue. These are life blue, 12 volt, 200 amp hours. We got three of them. They have the heater in them. And what else do they got in them? We'll talk about that inside. We'll talk about that inside. So that in a nutshell is our battery setup. We have three 200 amp hour lithium batteries connected in series and series. And it's a little different than our last battery bank because we had golf cart batteries that were six volts. So you had to, you had to connect two six volt batteries together to make a 12 volt and then connect it to the next one. So these were easy because you just go one to the next to the next to the next. You just go negative, 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 positive, positive, positive. And yeah. then positive off of one end and negative off the opposite end of the last battery. Mm. So super easy. I was going to try to get video of him connecting the batteries, taking them out of the box and putting them in. And when we got home, I, uh, I came in to put a couple things away. And by the time I came back out with the camera... He already had it done. <laughs> now, we've been told to go with a bus bar, but we didn't. We didn't go with the bus bar. Well, and the solar guy said we didn't need one. He said a lot of people are doing it. It's the in vogue thing right now, but it's not really necessary. So we, um, we went up to Discount Solar in Quartzite and bought these batteries. We were grateful to uh, Craig, the owner up there. He spent probably 45 minutes talking with us about these batteries and what their capabilities were and um, really um, making us feel comfortable with what we were buying. And um, we ended up going with the, what they call the low temp batteries. So they have, uh, not only do they have the Bluetooth battery monitor in them where you can uh, download an app on your phone and monitor the batteries in real time to see what's coming in and what's going out and what your battery life is. They also have the temperature sensor so when you get into freezing weather that sensor will actually kick on internal heaters that are within the battery and keep them warm when you're in freezing weather. Not that that's something we anticipate needing much. No. 
So, um, price wise, they're all about the same. You're going to pay about a thousand dollars per hundred amp hours of lithium battery. And that's pretty consistent across the board, no matter what brand you get. So we are into it for just under $6,000 for 600 amp hours of lithium batteries. And we have room to put two more. It would be tight, but possibly two. I know one. So we may upgrade that at some point. Now that we're getting a, a really good fix on just how much our appliance is used during the day. Like we said, we always thought our refrigerator was the biggest energy hog, and it is. We could probably dedicate a battery just to it. Yeah. But uh, we're finding there's some other things too that kind of create a ghost draw during the day. And I know we could get an amp meter. That would be the smart way to do it. But I really don't want to buy an amp meter for one time. I hate buying stuff for one time. Buy this wrench because you need to turn this bolt and never use it again. I'd rather hack at it with a hammer and a chisel. <laughs> so that's the approach we're taking. <laughs> no, we just, we, um, it's nice because you can read the batteries in real time so you can unplug and plug in different things and you can actually watch and see what it does with your battery reading. And so we're dialing it down. Um, his goal really with this was he wanted to go to sleep at night and not worry about the batteries being drained by morning. Guess what? It hasn't happened yet. The batteries haven't been drained and I haven't slept. <laughs> I still, I sleep, but man, that's the first thing I think of. No, it's not. He wakes up in the middle of the night and checks them. I do sometimes. <laughs> we do have, like, if we go to bed, we're finding that they draw down about 18 to 20% overnight. So if we go to bed with 63% battery life, we wake up with about 45% in the morning. And these batteries, because they're lithium, they're not lead acid, you can run them all the way down. Um, they said a hard cycle on them is if you run them down to 10% and then charge them up to 90%, that's a pretty hard cycle. Um, they're happiest if you can operate them in that 20% to 80% battery life range. So we've been trying to make sure we stick within that to try and, you know, and that it just extends their battery life. Mm-hmm. But he still doesn't sleep well at night worrying about him. He'll, it's going to take him a while to get used to him. Nope. Constantly. It's a lot of money to be sitting there just, ah, forget it. I can't. I cannot. It's like buying a brand new truck and just going out and putting some redneck pinstriping down on it the first day you owned it. <laughs> can't do it. Overall, I'd say we're really happy with him, though. I am. I'm, I'm happy. Um, when you first put them in, you have to charge them 100%, and that kind of sets your baseline for where they operate off of from that point on. And where before with the lead acids, we were running the generator about three hours a day? Maybe? Yeah, probably a couple hours, three hours at night, yeah. At least two or three hours and usually at night while we watch TV and it would put a topping charge on them so that the refrigerator wouldn't completely drain them overnight while we slept. But now, it would. It would take it. We would fill them all the way up to, you know, 12, 7, whatever an acid battery full is. And by the time we got up in the morning, they were down to 12, 1, 12. So they're about 50% discharged in the morning. And that was if we didn't run anything else at night. Yep. So now we can watch TV at night, run the computer, charge our phones, whatever, have the lights and shut all the lights and everything off and go to bed, leave the fridge running and wake up in the morning and we still have plenty of battery life left and still have enough for my uh, cup of coffee in the morning. We do play catch up though. We do. We will have to run the generator every now and then because... Like she said, we go to bed at 80%, we get up and it's 60%. We charge the batteries. They don't get fully charged. 
we only get maybe I don't know this morning let's just say for for instance this morning I got up and they were at 56 and we made it tonight when the Sun went down and we started discharging it was at 75 so now we'll get up in the morning and it's going to be what 40 something like 55 50 maybe maybe and then we'll charge it may not get all the way so it's like going two one step forward and three steps back you're going to have to run the generator sometime the good thing is where before we were running the generator two or three hours a night every single night we might run it to uh and I don't want to say top them off because you don't want to top these off, but maybe to get it up to 80%, we might run the generator for um, a while once every three or four days now. Yeah, about that, yeah. Or if we're going to run something big, just because we're still figuring out where we are with them, yeah. we might turn it on. And We can run the microwave. We can, you know, we can run the microwave. We can run the coffee pot. We can run the hair dryer. We can... We can run all that stuff with no problem now. Just not the air or the fireplace. Right. And it's not that they couldn't. We just don't have them connected to it. Yeah. It's uh, We pulled off what we wanted to run on a sub panel when we originally installed the system. And that's all of our electrical outlets, our TV, our refrigerator, our microwave. Um, GFI. And the GFIs. And so those are what we have on a sub panel to run off the solar. And then if we want to run the fireplace, the air conditioners, or we don't have one, but the washer dryer, those are all on the main panel. So we'd have to be plugged into shore power the way we're wired right now. Am I missing anything? No. Are you missing anything? No. <laughs> okay. Tell me what I did wrong. Tell me. And then uh, I'll tell you where I'm at and you can come show me how to do it right. Please do. <laughs> Because I'm still trying to figure out why these... And never mind. We're always learning with this, it always seems learning. like. Always learning. So, and we do. We want to give a, a huge thanks to Discount Solar and Quartzite. Mm -hmm. We researched them before we went up there. They had great customer reviews. Um, the owner has been doing solar for almost 30 years. Extremely knowledgeable. Um, and again, we just... We were thankful that he really took the time to talk to us and not only find out what our system was like that we we're running on this rig to make sure we we're looking at the right thing, but then to explain how everything worked that we were looking at, how the batteries worked, and to make sure that we we're going to be happy with what we bought. We had we were going up there to buy batteries, and he, he, wasn't, he thought he was just explaining stuff to us. And he took, I bet it was, if it wasn't an hour, it was 45 minutes sitting there talking to us, explaining. He, he really took some time, and... Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Whether he's right, I don't know. Whether he's wrong, I don't know. But I appreciate him taking time to talk to us. Yeah. And explaining a lot of stuff to us. Because this redneck don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I don't. I haven't the foggiest idea. Plug it in and it works. Bingo. <laughs> and he's available to us on the phone too. So he told us, he goes, I guarantee you'll be calling at least a couple of times with questions. And it's nice to know that there's somebody there. If we have an issue, if we have a question, that we can call and get help if we need it. And that means a lot to us. Um, yep. So. Now, so, whether we have enough on the roof to fill these things, I don't know. That'll be our next upgrade. <laughs> I, want a, I want a solar panel roof, the whole thing, front to back, side to side. But. No. no. That's for a later time, though. Because I'm the one that's got to get up there and clean them. And I'm getting old, and I think that's the whole thing. I'm getting old. Maybe if I slip and fall, break a hip, maybe she can just shove me off the bluff somewhere. <laughs> and I don't know. He went for a walk and didn't come back. <laughs> uh -huh. no. I think that's it. No. <sighs> I got to clean them. Hmm. Unless you're going to hire some sexy young schmuck to get up there in a Speedo and wash your roof. But if it comes to that. <laughs> as long as I can sit in the house and watch TV, I don't care. So our uh, our solar system, it's ever evolving, but this is our, this is what we spent our time working the sugar beet harvest for this year. 
this was our goal was to get the lithium and and that's what we did and so far we're glad we did yep hope you all enjoyed your thanksgiving yes and happy covid oh jeez. <laughs> Yeah, keep my brother and his wife in your prayers. They've got it, so. Um, but we do, we hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We did with our family. That's why we've been so busy. And you'll see that video next week. Yep. All right. Later. <laughs>